a genre, like a Western, a gangster, uh, space exploration kind of sci-fi film, zombie film. These genres will exist in perpetuity, and they will always be reformulated. Now, at one point, they were being made in the film noir way. Film noir is a language, which is deep shadows, strong angles, behavior over dialogue. And as a language, that vocabulary can be used in a film in which its whole world is made up of those stylistic elements. But it can also be used as tools to create film noir of science fiction, like Blade Runner, which to me is very much a, a film noir um, piece. For me, it's, it's a style of the 40s, a most interesting style, because it introduces more complexity, more ambiguity into American cinema. It introduces characters who are not all good or bad. People who use pretty faces like you use yours don't live very long anyway. How do you think I should use my face? You're rolling your own dice, kid. It had a lot to do with things held over from the Depression because so many of the stories were based on the works of writers who were writing at the peak of their powers during the Great Depression. And that's when you had Hammett and James M. Cain and W.R. Burnett started writing these crime pictures and Raymond Chandler started writing and Cornell Woolrich. And there was a huge wave of these movies. I, I call it the Black Tide that washed over Hollywood in the post-World War II years. And it was indicative, I think, of America's loss of innocence. What do you really think of me? You impress me as a man who needs a new suit of clothes or a new love affair. But he doesn't know which. Screenwriters were determined to paint almost an anti-myth. If Hollywood in the Depression was selling the idea of, don't worry about it, you know, we'll get out of it, and we're eternally optimistic, now that World War II had passed and we'd all seen just how bad it could really get, they were saying, hey, you know, it's time to grow up and that happily ever after thing is an abomination in a way. And so they created what essentially was an anti-myth in these crime dramas, you know, that the world is at heart a really nasty, dark, ugly place. And finally, I guess, American audiences were ready to accept that. Sounds like a soul in hell. I think World War II changed how we saw movies in many ways. Bogart could not have been a hero before World War II. The country was really more sophisticated and willing to accept a different kind of reality than they had before the war. Everyone grew up in World War II, and there was everything from existentialism to film noir that would really say there was a dark side out there. Now we start looking at each other again. We don't know what we're supposed to do. We don't know what's supposed to happen. We're too used to fighting. But we just don't know what to fight. Between the end of World War II and the atomic age and the threat of annihilation, suddenly you're looking at a world that is not comfortable in any way. You fought the great battle for democracy and you've won and yet death is hanging over you. Keely, what's happened? Has everything suddenly gone crazy? I don't mean just this, I mean everything. Or, or is it just me? No, it's not just you. The snakes are loose. Anybody can get them. I get them myself. They're friends of mine. We culturally, pop culturally, we always look for a metaphor. The same way that the Soviet threat was turned into, into aliens and spaceships and, and flying saucers. The frustration of returning soldiers coming back thinking they'd created a utopia and finding out it's still the same crappy old world translated into this entire genre of a chaotic world that had to be redressed by these lonely men who would sort things out. With World War II, the country was very reluctant to get into the war, uh, as are most of the heroes in film noir. They know that they're getting involved in something bad, but they have to do it for whatever reason. They're compelled into it, and once there, they learn that no matter how much they thought they had control over the situation, they don't, and that everything ended badly, even if you want. During World War II, all of the Hollywood studio films that sort of defined this new style of filmmaking were embargoed and they didn't see them in France. So there was a big retrospective of American movies in Paris in 1946. And they sort of noticed a shift, a sort of uh, seismic shift in, in American movies where they suddenly became much darker, where they, the themes were darker, where the look of the film was darker. 
There was shadowy lighting, curious girl lighting. There was um, violence, much more violence than there'd ever been. Um, psychology, Freudianism, existentialism, all these things were in these movies and they were shocked to see all this and so they began to write about it and they described it as film noir literally black film but the french were actually very amenable to this stuff before then because they were doing it themselves french poetic realism the films that jean gabin made and marcel carnier were all very much leading up to this and there was a whole series of novels released in france from the late 1930s the cire noir uh, which speaks to that idea that there is a noir content, the type of story you're telling, and a noir style, the way you're telling the story. I'll take those for you. Great themes of film noir, institutional corruption, sexual obsession, and lives in great psychological duress. You take those three elements, man, you can turn out a good crime story. Lieutenant! Lieutenant! That, uh, that guy you saw in my office, he's just passing through. Shut up. I didn't see anybody. How could I? I wasn't here. What often drives a film noir is a crime. And I think more importantly, a lot of times, it's the aftermath of the crime. It's the perfect heist that goes wrong. A gun fires of its own accord and a man is shot. And a broken down old house for no good for anything but chasing kids has to trip over us. Blind accidents. What can you do against blind accidents? It's seeing how people unravel under pressure. And a lot of what film noir is arises out of the aftermath of that crime. Hey, Dix. Dix, isn't he the one with the reward on him? Mind your own business. You know, paraphrasing Alfred Hitchcock, and when, when he was talking about melodrama, he said that it was reality with all the boring parts taken out. Film noir is us our basic sexual, greedy, honorable, and evil natures. All right, Lacey, get up. Slob, you. I think, for me, film noir is best defined, really, by the idea of character being defined through action. You have a set of characters engaged in a complex story, and you are not able to judge these characters until the end, and then you have to assess them through their actions, through the who did what to whom. So that's the tension in noir. We're not always sure who is the bad guy or the bad lady. No, I'm going to pick up a cab. I swear we'll share one. I'm afraid not. We go in different directions. That's where you're wrong. We're going in the same direction, you and I. What could be more noir than the anticipation of the ultimate denouement, which is death? The traditional noir ending is often grim, isn't it? It's the the bleeding to death in the gutter, which is inherited from the gangster film. You know, I mean, the you know the Fred McMurray dropping dead in the office at the end of Double Indemnity. That's how a proper noir ending is, or even just the trap closing in, the police arriving and taking away the regular guy who's been tempted into crime. If you take him in, I'll book this guy myself. One of the rules of film noir, one of the unspoken rules, is the, uh, the last line of the film, that the film really is playing until its very last line. The killing defines film noir in its last two lines. The woman turns to Sterling Hayden, the police are coming, he knows he's screwed, and she says, Johnny, you've got to run. And he just says, uh, what's the difference? And his delivery, the, the, the way in which he delivers it and then walks into the arms of the policeman is so fantastic. It's probably the most brutal vision of noir. It's the idea of, yeah, yeah, life is nasty, brutish, and short, yeah, but also cheap. <laughs> <laughs> 